We begin with the Sticharion. It is a long woven piece of vestment that goes from top to bottom, all the way covering our feet. And it has as its first meaning the baptismal garment, showing that we are, before priests, we are baptized to have our original sin washed away. The Sticharion, a long sleeve tunic, symbolizes the grace of the Holy Spirit coming upon, upon us, a garment of salvation, a garment of joy. Immediately following that, symbolizing the grace flowing through the beard of Aaron, Moses' brother, we place the Epitrachilion across our neck. And as the composite word means in Greek, Epitotrachilion, upon the neck. And that's where the name Epitrachilion comes from. So symbolic of the beard of Aaron, the grace of God flowing through the priest to the people. At the bottom, you'll always notice that there are tassels. And those tassels are symbolic of the souls. The souls of our parishioners upon which we have been given the responsibility to take care of here on earth. In order to keep things together and for a practical measure, a zoni, a belt is placed or a sash around to gird us and to gird us with the strength of God, but also in a practical measure to keep all the vestments together so that they're not floating. Also a symbol of chastity. Again, for a practical measure, we keep our sleeves tucked in with cuffs called epimanica, but they also have another symbolic meaning, and that is the strength of God through the hand of God is placed upon our hands and given to us as an honour and a blessing. Finally, a conal type vestment, the uh, felonion, is placed on top of everything with a cutout at the front so we can be able to place our hands quite easily and do the liturgical actions that we need to do. For those priests who have received an office from the bishop, the officio, they also place the epigonation, epigonato, meaning upon the knee. This vestment is an ancient vestment which used to be uh, given to a particular clergy of our church, deacons and priests, and it was originally a bag where they would place money and food and go out and distribute it to the poor. And as time progressed and these uh, clergy received particular offices, it remained just as a liturgical vestment showing liturgical office in the church. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, for he has clothed me in the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Blessed is God who pours his grace upon his priests, as ointment upon the head which runs down over the beard, the beard of Aaron, runs down the hem of his garment, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Blessed is God, who girds me with strength and has made my way blameless, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy, and in the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Your hands have made me and formed me, enlighten me that I may learn your commandments always, now and ever, until the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord for the mercy. Gird your sword on your thigh, mighty one, in your splendor and beauty. Stretch out your bowstrings. Go forth and prevail in the cause of truth, gentleness and justice. And may your right hand lead you to wondrous deeds, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord for her mercy. May your priests be clothed in righteousness, and your faithful ones rejoice, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. I will wash my hands in innocence and walk around your altar, O Lord, to hear the voice of praise and declare all your wondrous works. O Lord, I have loved the beauty of your house and the place where your glory abides. Destroy not, destroy not my spirit along with wicked people, nor take my life with bloodthirsty people who have crimes on their hands, whose right hand is filled with bribes, as for me, I have walked in innocence. Redeem me, Lord, and have mercy on me. My foot is set on a straight path. In the congregations, I will bless you, Lord, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All my dear friends, in the Old Testament, after God had liberated his people, the Hebrews, from slavery to the pharaohs in Egypt. He took them out into the land of milk and honey and gave them their freedom. For 40 years they were roaming there the desert doing the will of God. At some point, as we read in the book of Exodus, God directed Moses to construct a tabernacle to honor God with. And in that tabernacle, gave specific instructions on how to build it, the size, the materials to be used, and appointed Moses' brother, Aaron, as the first priest. The priests, from that point on, were both hereditary. In other words, Aaron's children, sons, became the priests as well. And they were to be decked out with garments which were finely woven and richly decorated to honour the glory of God. So this authority was in a Levitical priesthood and it ended when Christ got up on the cross. For we believe that Christ, who is God himself, was the one that sacrificed himself and became the high priest. In fact, in Orthodox theology, we believe that Christ had a threefold ministry, one of priest or high priest, prophet and teacher. And it's that first one that we continue on as Orthodox Christian priests. We don't actually stand instead of Christ in front of the altar performing the sacrificial uh, lamb uh, and, and the cutting of um, the bread and the offering of the wine, but we stand as though Christ was here himself. And so in continuation from the book of Exodus and the Levitical priesthood, we make sure that our vestments actually continue to show honour and glory to God by making sure that they are finely woven with beautiful materials in order to show this great grace and glory towards God. The other reason is by having beautiful vestments, we place the parishioners, believers, in an atmosphere of understanding an atmosphere that they enter into a different realm, a heavenly realm, a beautiful realm, where perfection and beauty and glory exist. And so, each one of the pieces of vestments, finely woven with beautiful colours and materials, have 
their place and meaning.